Hey, this is Tom, and welcome to my world. And this is Tom's Radio Room Show. We're down in my workshop. I spent about two days trying to at least clean off this workbench here. And it took me about six hours or two days to get it cleaned off. And one of the reasons it took me so long is so many things were broken that while I was cleaning, I thought, you know, I'll get them working again. For instance, if we uh, zoom back, and I think it's going to show up, yeah, right there. Do a little zooming here. Okay, right there is my scanner radio. This is my BC780XLT, which has been a workhorse until... About a year ago, when the local police, fire, and EMS went to digital, and that particular scanner doesn't do digital, so it's dumb and dead, and it's not upgradable. So, But it's still a good scanner. I can use it for other things. Down there, it's folded up right now, is a laptop that controls that scanner, and the software that I've got installed in there can um, scan frequencies you designate and save what it found and all kinds of features. So I still use that a lot. I had a monitor over there, uh, external monitor for that laptop. And since I'm right now just using that laptop for controlling that radio, then I don't need the external monitor, the built-in Screen is fine, and if we back up a second here, whoops, wrong way. And then I also cleaned out this one third, and as you can actually see the floor now, the carpet, it's actually a rug, not a carpet. The one third of the garage slash workshop, because before that equipment and other equipment came all the way out to where that computer, that one that has the aluminum case was. So all that area was blocked off. I could not get to any of those shelves up there. You can see kind of buried right now again is my helicopter radio that I showed a couple of shows ago. ago. And down below there are 10 PCs all in Excellent working condition. I, one of my hobbies, and I've kind of put it on hold, is recycling old computers. I would get old computers that people were throwing out for whatever reason, and I would clean all the user files, reformat the hard drive, put it, replace the operating system, and then I would give away those computers who people couldn't afford a computer or their computer broke down or whatever and I give them away well that was taking up a lot of time a lot of people wanting those computers and I just had had to put that on hold because I had other things to do including my YouTube show so I put that on hold we span over here um, there's some more radios buried down in there there's another workbench which right now has a Heath kit um, monitor scope slash timer that I pulled off of the the shelves back there that was hidden and I'll do a review of that and then down here is more stuff to do I got more radios over here you probably can't see it but I have more radios hidden over here that I haven't dug out so I got started but I still got a lot to do oops but drop the camera there. Sorry for the uh, little joyride there. So anyway, now that I've got some space, I'm going to set up my ICOM uh, IC706 radio. It's a transceiver, a shortwave transceiver. I've had it for probably 12 years. It's, it's been a very good radio, nice big screen on it. It is a portable radio, so you can put it in your vehicle or even lug it around. 
And one of the things that MFJ sent me is an antenna tuner and power SWR power meter, which it would be used by amateur radio operators. And this one is a small one, so it's portable, and therefore it could work with a portable radio like this one here. So I'm going to be setting that up and then do a review of it. I have to hook up the, the radio to some power, which I have uh, access to now, <laughs> right there, those two boxes there. And I could not find my um, microphone, my handheld microphone. I could not find it. But I did find this right here, which is an adapter to use desk mics. And I do have some desk mics that will plug into this. So this end plugs into the radio, and this is where you plug into your old style desk mic that had this big giant connector. So I'm gonna dig out, and I have found them, I'm gonna dig out some microphones to use to operate this transceiver. And then I will, what I'm planning on doing, and I don't know if I'll be successful or not, is I'm going to use the MFJ antenna analyzer that MFJ sent me for review and check that little, I say little, it's about 25, maybe longer. I never have re measured it. it. It could be as long as 50 feet. I, did some looking the other day and I was like, well, this is more than 25 feet. But anyway, I got a little wire antenna outside, nothing special. And I'm going to use the antenna tuner, which is in the white box there, and connect it to that antenna and see if I can get a good impedance match in a low SWR. Now, by doing that, as most of our, I'm sure all of you amateur radio operators know that that doesn't mean that I'm taking a not so good antenna and making a good antenna. All this antenna tuner is doing is matching the impedance of the radio to the antenna so that you get theoretically maximum transfer to the antenna but like I say it doesn't make it a good antenna necessarily but you don't have a lot of reflective power coming back because there's an impedance mis mismatch between the antenna and the radio so that's the purpose of that um, antenna tuner in this particular one you can even just use a random wire antenna in the field, you know, throw up an antenna in the field and tune it in, tune in that antenna to match the impedance of the radio and therefore you're not potentially damaging your radio and you're getting the maximum output you can with that situation. You know, I hope you understand what I mean. I'm not, the tuner is not making a piece of wire a good antenna. It's just matching it in Pete's wife. I hope that makes sense. So anyway, so that's what I plan on doing. Um, I will be doing, like I say, a series of videos. Um, I will offline hook up the radio to the power, hook up, and I'll just take it out of the box right now. Let me move this out of the way. I will take this antenna tuner. This is, this is a small antenna tuner. For, it's portable. That's the idea. It's portable, and you can buy antenna tuners that you can put a lot of power in. You can put kilowatts out, kilowatts of power into it, but they're big and bulky to handle that. This will only handle, and it's not marked on the box, but I think it's 300 watts. That's a maximum power from your transmitter that you can put into this tuner to your antenna. So I will be. Um, uh, uh, matter of fact, I only will be transmitting um, very low power with this radio. Now, the one thing I have to keep in mind is I only have a technicians, yeah, yeah, everybody's booing now, a technicians class amateur radio license. I think I told you in the previous videos 
that I was studying for my general class license with a friend of mine and he all of a sudden died. He had a heart attack and died. So I just kind of put that aside and I haven't gone back to it. But I am. I am going to go back to it. I'm kind of over his death finally. He was a very good friend of mine. He was, he was a true friend, a person that would do things for you and didn't expect you to do things back for him. And as a matter of fact, he's the one that found this radio for me um, indirectly. He bought it for himself, used, and he showed it to me and showed how many neat features it has and all this stuff. And he saw that I really liked it, so he sold it to me for less than he, what he paid for it. So that's where that came from. Um, so here's the antenna tuner. Let me uh, quickly uh, but carefully unpack it. Find a little tape here. Well, maybe I won't. <laughs> so it comes. There it is. Oh, what the heck? I, don't... I think that's a power adapter. Um, let me see if this is even showing up on the camera. Yeah, there it is. So here it is, and it has the what's called a cross needle power SWR meter built in. It has these three controls for tuning your radio to the antenna that you're using. And it has your standard connectors, transmitter input, antenna input, or connection. This is for a balanced line antenna. And here's the ground terminal. You can provide power and I haven't read the manual thoroughly to see if you have to provide power. I'll have to check on that because I know the backlight for this requires power, but I don't think anything else is because it's not, there's mainly just tuning components, you know, capacitors, inductors, and that kind of thing inside this box. So anyway, that'll be the show. If you uh, enjoyed the show, please give me a thumbs up. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.